Hi everyone, this is Anna from Heinz. I'm here in Madrid talking to you and this is Records in My Life. I was going to say that we shot in Vancouver, right? The same day as you you guys were shooting with Nardwar. We shot like at the record store with you guys. I had a great time. Yeah, so fucking good. So good. I miss traveling. I miss seeing each other in person. I wish this could be different. <laughs> yes, yes, totally. I know. And you guys are personable people and you love to play live. And I know you interacting with your fans and all that stuff. That's That's the true passion. Yes. But, oh, well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about let's talk about your new album. Congratulations. It just came out recently. Tell us, tell us all about it. Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, what to tell you about it? Uh, I don't know. It's been very fucking weird to release an album now. Um, I feel like I've had like two different uh, sort of lockdown feelings. Like uh, the first one before releasing the album, was kind of like great because it was like the first break we've ever had since we started the band, so like for six, seven years. Um, and then suddenly we released it and like obviously there's like so much work, like so much press and like rehearsals and stuff, but then it feels like something is stopping me from actually releasing it, which it would be like touring and like and playing those songs live and stuff. So it's it's been a little frustrating, but um, I think a lot of, peop of people are listening it. I think our old fans like it and we're getting to new people. So as far as I'm concerned from my computer and internet, I think it's going well. <laughs> the, the album is fantastic. I mean, I've listened to it Thank a couple you. times and really, really enjoyed it. Um, not Thank saying you. it because you're on the show, but out of, on, out of Are honesty. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's the other thing I do. I, I publish a website and we, uh, the writer loved the album that, that wrote the review. I like the album. I think, I think you got an eight or an 8.5 or 8 out of 10. Nice. You wow. didn't, it wasn't perfect, but it was pretty close to perfect. So, If it was perfect, uh, no one would give it a 10 anyways. You know, I mean, you can <laughs> never win with those things. But yes, glad. exactly. Well, tell us, uh, for, who did you work with on, um, on the album? So we worked uh, uh, Jen De Silveo. She's, uh, she was a producer of the, of the whole thing, and she is American. And we met her in LA in a trip we did to kind of like meet producers and stuff. Cause when we first started writing this album, um, we knew we wanted something different and we knew we wanted, like we had like a few things clear, like we want to sing a little bit in Spanish, like at least try to see how, how we sound when we sing in our own language, which is funny to just question it. But you know, when it's new, it's very, anything new is kind of scary. Um, so we're like, okay, we want to, we want to do that. And then we want to, for the first time, kind of like investigate in production which would mean letting someone else uh, inside the, the, the whole process and not just us writing the, all of the songs and then just going two weeks in the studio and be like, hey, do whatever you can with these two songs. And then by, you know, kind of like have someone listening to the demos and not finish everything and just in general have, have a producer more um, in, in, involved in the whole, in the whole process. Uh, so we met her and the day we met her, we wrote Writing Solo and Waiting For You, which are like just two songs in the album. Um, and right away, like the energy was absolutely incredible. Like I haven't felt that since I played for the first time with the band members, you know, it was like super electric and like very respectful, but very crazy at the same time. I don't know. I just really, really enjoyed her and, and I admired her. So since that day that we met, we were like, right, that's her. But then we were two more, three more weeks in LA and kind of like all of our team was like, well, we'll see, you need to meet other people and stuff. And we're like, okay, yeah, we'll meet. But it, deep down we knew she was going to be the one. And she actually was, like, she was the best out of everyone we met, uh, for, for obviously for, for what we wanted and, and stuff. Um, so she jumped right away on board since, yes, that was like July, so almost a year ago. And then we recorded, we kind of like did some pre-production with her. She came to Madrid for a week. We recorded a couple of songs in London because she was there for whatever. So obviously it was cheaper to just do it in London than everyone going to America. 
And then we went for three weeks in, to Brooklyn. She's actually from there, and it was kind of like a middle point between Madrid and LA. Um, and we just spent three weeks there having fun in the studio, which is something new as well for Heinz, because it was always like very, very rushed and, and, you know, kind of like touring, 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 a little bit of writing and recording and then touring forever. And this time was like, no, okay, like three weeks and we had already done some pre-production and stuff. So that went really well. I could actually say it's the first time I enjoy being in the studio, like actually enjoying, not just like feel anxious and, you know, stressed about everything. Um, and then Ben Bhatti, which, uh, his uh, English, he mixed it. He mixed um, the songs and as well, like we had already worked with him in the last single we released, uh, like before this album. And he's just such a fuck, he's very, very talented, but especially he's a sweetheart. Like we, we call him our angel because we struggle a lot on kind of like communication, I guess. Sometimes it's because of uh, being Spanish or the accents or just in general, we're good at like doing music and making it, but not so much talking about it. So like mixing um, in, in distance, like not in person was like, has been always very challenging for us, like how to communicate exactly what we want. Um, and he was like very, very patient. And like we had a million Skypes trying to like go back and forth. Like that took a little bit, but, but we made it. Um, and then it was mastered by Emily and she's, she's also American, but. Emily honest, Lazar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But to me, masters uh, are a little bit like magic. Like they tell me it's master and I'm like, cool. But it's so hard for me to hear the difference between master and not master, which, which I guess I should learn it, but I seriously don't hear it so much. But she is also <laughs> lovely. We met her as well in person. So. so all the team was like very, very, very fucking nice, honestly, like nice people and, and nice creatives. It's pretty amazing. It's great that there's, and I'm not just saying this, but I, you know, because it's my job to notice as well, but there's so many great women producers now and engineers, like a lot of like the press releases that I read on, on the other side, there's, I mean, there's amazing, you know, like I'm not saying men or women or whatever people, you know, humans, but at least women now are, are getting that shot to, uh, to take the wheel, you know, and produce, yeah, yeah. you know, like I mean, she's many. Like, she has she has definitely been the first female producer we ever worked with, which is crazy, you know, because we've worked like, like, I don't know, we've worked with other bands or we've toured with other bands with women on it, but like in the production world, it's true that, that it's even further behind. And it's obviously now this is the album that obviously is my favorite Heinz album. And it's, but as I was saying before, it was the actual first time I enjoyed my time in the studio. And that's thanks to the producer, which is Jen. So, so I'm really, really happy we found her like on time and everything worked out because I feel like everything would have been different with, with someone else. So. Yeah, and Emily has, has mastered some huge records too. Like I think- Oh, I you... know. She, she was remastered, when, when we met her, she just had remastered like the Beatles, like something yeah. crazy. Like she was hit, like, like we were just thinking like, oh my God, this woman had, has like crazy files in her laptop, you know? Like yeah. what would happen if someone stole her laptop? Like actually Beatles, you know, kind of like, Oh, only the voices or remixing, like, it's just, oh. yeah. And she's super cool as well in person. Cool. So what's, what's, uh, I'll put you on the spot here and ask you, what's your favorite child on the new, uh, your favorite song, your favorite child, baby off uh, the new record, the one you're most proud of? Mm. I'm really proud. I have a uh, mixed feelings. I'm going to say kind of like half and half of two songs. Because as a, as a song itself, I think I would say a Good Bad Times, which is the opening track of the album, um, because of kind of like what it represents to me um, of like how far we've come uh, coming from the last album, you know, kind of it's like it was the proof to me that we could do something super different and play new instruments and have a very different production and sound and even like the tone of the voices and half of it is in Spanish. Like everything is so different from what we've done before, but I still really recognize our kind of like essence there so as a song i think that that was the most like fuck yeah we did it you know kind of like we made it um but then for lyrics i have to say just like it's meow like i'm really really proud of those lyrics which are kind of like um a little bit like making fun of all the comments and and criticisms or advice we've been having for so many years in the music industry and by fans and stuff because of being like women in in a band and and I'm really, really proud of how they ended up being like, because they have a little bit like of humor and stuff. And I like the, the kind of like way we wrote them. 
Thank you so much for being on Records in My Life. The show is about you, the artist, and your band, and the records that have inspired you to play music. Let's let's start a bit at the beginning of Heinz. I know you have Craigslist in in uh, in Madrid. If there was a Craigslist ad and you were looking for bandmates, which albums? You know, you have you have to write obviously to your perspective. Uh, like must like these albums that you all bonded over. Okay, it's weird because, well, when we first ever started, we kind of like listened to a lot of uh, music from outside, which is what made us kind of like sing in English and all these weird things that other uh, Spanish bands weren't doing. But in the very beginning, um, a band that was there, like kind of like our mentors and, and best friends and like guide us through everything, like uh, everything that is so uncertain when you first start the band and you don't understand anything of being on stage or off stage, I would say the Parrots which actually uh, the, the singer and guitar player, he produced our first album. Sure. Okay, cool, cool. Now we're, we're, we don't, I never ever mention this, but we're a Vancouver based show. It has nothing to do because we, you know, interview artists from all over the world and we, but I know Mac DeMarco has been a, or has been a big influence on your writing and your, and your music. Yeah. What's your favorite, what's your favorite Mac DeMarco record? Um, I feel like I have to say Mac DeMarco 2, uh, because that is kind of like, it, it, it came out maybe like a year before we started the band or while we were already thinking about a, I can't, I can't remember exactly, but like, I do remember back then we still didn't have like good internet in our phones and stuff. And mm -hmm. I remember the way we listened to the way, the, the way I first ever heard that record was, um, actually Alex from the Parrots that I just mentioned. Um, gave to Carlota a CD, like an actual CD player um, with that album. And I had no idea who he was, where he was from, what kind of music it was, but uh, Sissy gave it to me and she was like, um, just listen to this, it's amazing, whatever. And like, I was driving to uni uh, and I just played it like super randomly and I was like blown away because it was kind of like the first uh, well, band or, or guy that I heard that was kind of like doing music that felt like... Um, how to say, like, like it wasn't super produced and it, it, it felt like really close to me, like, oh, may, maybe I could do this, even like, not in the sense of like, write those songs, because I think he's an amazing songwriter, but like the way of recording and I'm performing them and the way he like um, introduces some sounds in the end and some whispers and even the lighter thing at, in the end of, mm. of a song, it's just, it felt really, really like, like it really like shocked me how, how close I felt to, to the person I was listening to, even if I didn't even know who he was. Um, so yeah, that album really, really meant a lot. And like, obviously, Salad Days afterwards, it, it was it's still an amazing record. But that was the first one that I was like, wow. And it kind of like introduced us to that whole like burger records, um, kind of like bands and, and movement that was happening in America. Was that song with the lighter you're referring to, Viceroy? I can't, I can't yeah, remember. exactly. That's so brilliant. C -C -C. Brilliant. C -C -C. I love um, it. Give us, give us a couple of young Spanish bands that we should be looking out for. Mm. Mira, eh, all of the ones I'm going to say are friends, but that doesn't mean they're not the best Spanish bands happening. Of course. Uh, so a band that just started is called Menta, which is mint in Spanish. Um, another one is eh, Rodrigo, which is actually you write it like R-O-T-H-R-I-D-O. -O, so Rodrigo, I don't know how you pronounce that in English, but he, th that guy, he's, he's a good friend, but he is the guy that took the picture that inspired our album cover. Like in the, in the album, actually, I, I wish you had it here. But um, we have inside like a poster with just kind of like the reference of, of the inspiration. And, and he's a photographer, but now he's doing music and it's really amazing. It actually sounds a little bit like Magne Marco now that we're saying. Um, then Oro Vega as well. Uh, then Los Puncetes. They're really good, especially I love their, their lyrics, uh, the way of writing lyrics, because obviously when we, what I told you before, we were very scared about singing and writing in Spanish lyrics. Um, so we started, literally studied it, and Los Puncetes were one of like our, our mentors that we were kind of like studying how they wrote lyrics. Thank you for that. We, we pride ourselves on educating people about great music through, through you guys, through the artists singing. <laughs> That, that that's the whole idea behind the show what if there was an album 
you could hear live in its entirety, which one would it be? Amy Winehouse, Back to, back to Black. Definitely. Right away, no hesitation. No, because I was thinking about it because uh, when I was reading like what the, what the interview was about, like, I was thinking what would be like the records of my life, you know, kind of like making those questions. And like, obviously she's one of like a, out of my list. She's actually the only person that I'm never going to see because, you know, unfortunately she died. So, so she's like my Beatles. <laughs> What is the best, what, what would you consider your favorite romantic record? I'm not sure if, if it's like romantic, but I think so. Um, uh, the Little Joy record, I think it's self-titled. The, they only have one, right? Well, yeah. Little, I think so, there's li- one. Little Joy, yeah. I love that one. It's a little bit, I was thinking like maybe them or maybe the Vendravan Heart, because like it's not super romantic, but it's kind of like morning romantic, you know, kind of like has a little bit of energy, but it's like very sweet and stuff and and yeah i love that record what album would you consider a masterpiece amy winehouse back to back (laughs) (laughs) that's great that's great (laughs) finally thank you again so much for being on the show we just have a few more quick questions that we like to ask all guests um weed wine or water (laughs) for listening to your favorite record and for writing not weed because I don't smoke weed. So, oof, oof. I think for listening, wine. But for writing, I'm gonna have to introduce a new beverage, which is beer, because <laughs> otherwise wine will get me like to sleep. You know, like sometimes it's so long that it just wines get you like a little bit moody, and when you're writing, you don't. If you do that, you fall asleep. <laughs> That's good. I'm surprised more like beer, like it's been very referent. Ref, it hasn't been referenced as much. I'm surprised because it's a good, it's a good beverage to like, you know, not get you claro, too. Because it's slow, you know, yeah. like if you, you can't, if you have, I don't know, three glasses of wine, you're already like perfect for listening and dancing, but not perfect for, for staying awake and thinking. <laughs> right. <laughs> Going back to your high school days. What's the first album, like like the record of your generation? What's the first album you think of? Like, like kind of like when I was very, very young, the, that first album or teenager when I was already, when I already thought I was cool. And like, yeah, rock. that's that's kind of like, you know, when you're a teenager, you know, like ah, rock and roll was, high school, right? Yeah. Type of thing. Uh, I think it would be. Cosmos Factory from the Credence Clearwater Revival. Wow. Um, yeah, I used to listen, like, uh, back then when I was a teenager, I was a little bit, like, um, lost in, in my school because no one or no one that I met uh, really liked that kind of music and, like, rock and stuff. And uh, I had an older boyfriend. He was just two years older. But he was in a band, and, like, he kind of, like, like, I felt like anyone in my age didn't listen to rock music, but two years above, it, it was, like, a thing. So, yeah, I remember listening to, like, a lot of uh, the Sonics and, like, all that kind of, like, good, like, rock oldies and stuff. And that album also really reminds me a lot to, to my dad. He loves the band. And I remember him playing the actual vinyl that I stole from him and I have in my house. <laughs> um, yeah, and I really like the cover as well. <laughs> what a cool dad. I mean, you're just, yeah, I know. you're in that age demographic where, you know, your folks could still... They, they cool. got the line where they're into some cool records, right? They're not that old, or they're, you know what I mean? Or, yeah. <laughs> and and finally, we like to ask all all of our all of our guests for some words of wisdom for their fans and our audience. I guess I I but I'm gonna talk to myself. I guess we all need to support each other a lot. And in every sense of like a small bands, small record stores, small venues, like everything. Well, even big bands, because like even when like people think we're big and we can't afford rent. So even for people that think it's like big and stuff, you know, it's just like in, in general, everyone now is the moment to kind of like decide where to put like your money or if you don't have money, like your energy and your support on, on things that that are kind of like you know, where that are a little bit like independent or like where you see like the people behind it and stuff. And I feel like all of those things, even if it's music or not music, really could use a lot of help now because I feel like uh, the big ones uh, are doing 
the same or even better. And the small ones are, were like slowly um, joining. So a message of hope and support each other and think think of who you're supporting because everyone needs help now. So think where you're, I don't know. Like I, one of my favorite uh, lyrics is from um, Moonfire and Sons, which is the band I don't even listen to, but like I remember that lyric really uh, struck to me and it's like, where you invest your love, you invest your life. So kind of like that, you know, like be conscious of where you're spending like your time and energy. That's fantastic advice, especially in this in this day and age. We need, you know, we need art and we need we need music back, and we need to uh, we need to support it. As, as uh, I'm sure, I'm not telling you, but it's it, it's great advice. Thank you so much, and of course, and and best of luck with the new with the new baby, the new record. We I like to call Thank them you. babies, but uh, yeah, they are it's a babies. great Thank record. You Thank it's you. It's a great record, and people should buy it for sure. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Have a Thank great you so evening. Much. Thank you. you too. Bye. Take, Take care. care. Hi, I'm Mark Henning, the other half of Records in My Life. Love it that you made it to the end of the video. Please leave us a comment, leave us a thumbs up, and subscribe. If you really dug the show, we'd love it if you'd consider supporting us over at patreon.com forward slash R-I-M-L-T-V. Cheers and see you next week.